Well, g'day, curd nerds. Today, we're making Red Leicester cheese. So Red Leicester cheese is from, originally from Leicestershire, but it's made in other parts of the world and the United Kingdom now. It's called Red Leicester because during the war days in World War II, there was a cheese known as White Leicester. Uh, and that was due to rationing and that sort of thing, and they couldn't get Anato from South America. Which, by the way, gives Red Leicester its colour. I actually put 32 drops of Anato into this cheese, and that, for those who have made cheese with Anato before, will know that it's quite excessive. So that gives it, it nice orangey red colour to the Red Leicester cheese. In the past, they used to use carrot juice and beetroot juice or a combination of both uh, until Anato was available from South America. Now Anato is from is, is the berry of a bush called the lipstick bush uh, and uh, it is used to colour cheeses. The reason they coloured cheeses back in the old days is to indicate to the buyer that it is high in fat. It's actually a bit of a trick. So they could use lower quality milk and get away with it by adding a natto. Anyway, so let me show you how I made this very wheel of Red Leicester. So start by putting about two inches of water into your biggest pot. I'm putting all the stainless steel pieces of equipment in there and we're gonna boil those for 15 minutes. For the plastic equipment, we just spray with either star sand or with white vinegar and allow those to dry. Once they're all boiled for the 15 minutes, lay them out in a clean tea towel. So you're all prepped, ready to go. So the ingredients for this cheese, Red Leicester, 10 litres or 2.5 gallons of whole cow's milk, 1 eighth of a teaspoon of MA11 or MO30 mesophilic starter culture, 32 drops or 1.6 millilitres of anato, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride, diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength rennet in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. I'm using IMCU 200 strength for this make. Two tablespoons of cheese salt plus a little bit more and cheese wax or vacuum packing for maturation. Once you've got all your milk in there, I'm using Cream Top Ingle Nook Dairy Milk today. And it is the one of the best milks I have found to make cheese with at home. So I'm just heating up the milk now to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. There we go, we've reached the target temperature. Or close enough. So now we're going to add the starter culture. Just sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. Uh, I'm using MO30. You can use a little bit less than one eighth of a teaspoon. It's fairly strong stuff. Allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. So five minutes later, we're gonna stir in the culture. Now the addition of this starter culture or lactic bacteria begins to break down the lactose in the milk and converts it into lactic acid. So just checking the temperature. Yeah, and that's spot on. I'm gonna allow the milk to ripen now for 45 minutes. So meanwhile, we can measure out all of our liquid ingredients. I'm just measuring out the calcium chloride there. Now measuring out the rennet. So notice when I'm finished mixing the ingredient, I put the bottle it came from just behind the measuring cup. Now with a natto, make sure you shake the bottle and then measure out how much anato? Now this is sped up footage, so it looks like there's only about 16 drops, but trust me, there's 32. Now 
there we go and then mix that with the water now be careful it does stain your fingers only for a little while soapy water gets it off so I'm just cleaning out the pipette to get any any more out and then the milk once it's been ripened we're going to add the ingredients to it so just check the temperature there we go spot on 30.7 close enough for me turn the sous vide down a little bit give it a good stir to make sure that the cream hasn't floated to the top and then we're going to add the annatto and that drastically changes the color of the milk so just give it a little bit of a stir so it's mixed all the way through and now we're going to add the calcium chloride this adds back some soluble calcium that's been destroyed after pasteurization just give that a stir for about 30 seconds so it's incorporated through the milk now we're going to add in the rennet solution just make sure you're stirring when you pour it in so it mixes through uh, better so stir for no more than one minute so the total curd set time will be 45 minutes for this make so now we're going to check for a clean break and yep that looks pretty good to me excellent so now we're going to use the curd cutter I'm going to cut it into six millimeter or quarter inch cubes very small not small enough to use a whisk but certainly small enough that I would have to be fairly accurate when I'm cutting with the curd knife I tried to get them as small as I possibly could You can see I'm just going back over anything that was too big. So we're going to allow the curds to heal for five minutes. I'm going to come back and you can see a fair bit of whey has been expelled. But we're going to gently separate the curds just to check for any big bits. And we're going to stir for 15 minutes at this current temperature. So 15 minutes later, a lot more whey has been expelled. I'm going to raise the temperature to 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit over a period of 30 minutes whilst continuously stirring. Now I just turned the temperature of the sous vide straight up and it did take about 25 to 30 minutes to hit the target temperature. Anyway, time for our sponsor. So allow me to interrupt this very interesting Red Leicester video with a plug. Yes, this is a word from our sponsor, Little Green Workshops, which is the company that Kim and I both own. And to make this cheese, I thought I'd just show you what we have available at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. So I used the equipment from the hard cheese kit, which is available to purchase online. It also has the basket. It's got some wax. It doesn't have a natto, so you'll have to buy that separately if you're going to make Red Leicester. And to press the cheese, I used the cheese press. This is the spring cheese press that you see in the video uh, and uh, I make most of my cheeses with that. Uh, this one is a little bit cheaper. This is the Artisan Cheese Kit which includes a natto and it includes a press. The batch will be probably a little bit smaller. I use 10 litres of milk in this recipe. Um, the press in this one can probably only do about 8 litres of milk. So just adjust the recipe accordingly. So the Artisan Cheese Kit has everything in it that you need to make Red Leicester. So as a special offer today from Little Green Workshops, I have a 10% discount code for all you curd nerds out there. So just use the coupon code ANATO and you'll get 10% off of your order. Don't forget that we ship globally to most countries throughout the world. Anyway, back to the cheese video. So 30 minutes later of stirring, just going to check the target temperature and it should be at 35 
Yep, I can just see it's at 35.4, so a little bit too high, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt the cheese. So now we're going to remove the cheese from the heat. Just put the lid on so you don't get any water or dust or any whatever in there. Just taking away the precision cooker and emptying the water out of the sink. I'm going to transfer the curds into a cheesecloth lined colander. I'm using loose weave cheesecloth here. And just pour it all in there. Get as much as you can out with your hands. Put a lid on it and we're going to drain it for 20 minutes. So 20 minutes later it should have drained a fair bit because the curds are fairly small as we remember rightly. And we're going to transfer the curds with the cloth onto the draining board. The draining board has been sanitised, so it's clean to plonk it down there. So it should stay in one big solid form. Now we're going to do some cheddaring. We're going to cut the curds into 5cm or 2 inch fingers. I'm using my thumb uh, as a rule of thumb to measure the curds. So I've got these big fingers. I'm going to transfer those back into the colander. And we're going to use that for cheddaring. Now you can break these big fingers in half, that's no big deal. So to keep them warm, I'm just going to put the lid on top and allow them to rest for 20 minutes. So 20 minutes later, we're going to turn the slabs over the bottom ones and put the bottom ones on top. This just aids in creating the right texture in the final cheese and draining more whey from the curds. So we're going to cover to keep them warm and rest for another 20 minutes. So once again, turn the curd slabs over again and put the ones that are on the bottom on the top. Cover and then we're going to allow them to rest for another 20 minutes. Now they are staying fairly warm which is good. The lid really helps. And then we're going to turn them over and put the bottom ones on the top again. Now they do tend to stick together so I just break them apart and we're going to let them rest for another 20 minutes. So after all the cheddaring is complete we're going to mill the curds into thumbnail size pieces and return them back to the pot. This does take a little bit of time. In commercial dairies they've got a machine that does this for you but my thumbs are machines. So there we go. Just uh, getting the last of them in now. So you've got these chunky bits of curd. Just make sure there's no really big pieces. Just check them through. And now we're going to add the salt and mix well through the curd. So we need two tablespoons of salt. I'm just using a fine salt here without any anti-caking agent and no iodine. Just give that a good stir through the curds. There we go, all done. Now I'm going to line the basket with the cheesecloth. You can use the same one you drained through. It works fine. And now we're going to scoop the curds into the basket and fill it up to the top. I'm using 165mm basket that we sell at Little Green Workshops. It's a staple in my cheese kitchen. So now we're going to push down the curds, uh, just put the cloth over the top, put the follower on top and give it a bit of a push and put it into the press. So I'm using my spring press, so I'm estimating about 7 kilograms or 15 pounds of pressure. And we're doing that for 30 minutes for the initial press. So 30 minutes later, we're going to remove the cheese from the basket. There's a bit of whey being expelled there. Now just remember it's very fragile at this stage. So when we pull it out, we're going to turn it over. And we're going to do that very gently. It hasn't formed a rind yet. So it's just compacted into the shape we want. So just be gentle and then turn it over. There we go. And we're going to pop it back into the basket. 
I'm going to press it again, this time doubling the pressure to 14 kilograms or 30 pounds for two hours this time. Excellent. So go and take a break. Come back two hours later and remove the cheese from the basket. You can see the whey is nearly running clear there. So it's a good sign that uh, you're not pressing too hard. So we formed a rind. So we don't have to be as gentle now, but just turn it over. Pop it back in the cloth again. Pop it back into the basket. And we're going to give it one more pressing. This time at 22.5 kilograms or 50 pounds of pressure for 24 hours. This will help the rind knit together. So one day later, we remove the cheese from the basket. go the rind is completely closed which is fantastic now we're going to rub one teaspoon of salt all over the cheese this helps it air dry better for this type of cheese I don't do this normally but in this recipe we're just rubbing some salt over the outside beautiful place on a drying mat and we're going to Air dry at room temperature, 21 Celsius or 70 Fahrenheit, until touch dry. Mine took about three days. Just make sure during that time you, you turn it twice daily. So it changes colour during air drying. It is a lot darker. So after air drying, we're going to wax or vacuum pack the cheese. I chose to vacuum pack. It's a lot easier. And the cheese matures just as well as it would if it was waxed. So just cutting the sheet there, popping it into the vacuum sealer, giving a good seal. I double seal just to make sure in case one seal breaks that the cheese doesn't get infected. Just write on the bag when it's mature. So for Red Leicester, we're gonna ripen at 10 to 12 Celsius or 50 to 54 Fahrenheit for four months. Anyway, back to Gav. Well, there you have it, curd nerds. That's how you make Red Leicester. This one's going to be aged for four months. I made it in late April. It will be ready in late July. Uh, so four months aging for this cheese. I expect it to be crumbly uh, and a little bit creamy, but it should have a lovely texture nonetheless. It is in the family of cheddar cheeses after all. Uh, and yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing tasting cheese. Now, if you want the recipe card for this, I'll put the link down below uh, where you can purchase it. Also, don't forget that you can also find the links to my two books, Keep Calm and Make Cheese, and Keep Calm and Make More Cheese, in the description down below. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.